This episode may contain adult themes and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Film Critic and the Common Man podcast. Other film podcasts may look down on the Bubblegum Shrimp Company, but we view it as the finest of fine dining. Every episode, we discuss a film from the perspective of a film critic and from the perspective of a common man. We may not agree, but it certainly won't be boring. I am your host, Ben Miller. I write and podcast about films on my own site, Ice Cream for Freaks, and a member of the North Texas Film Critics Association, as well as the International Film Society Critics. I'm joined by my brother and common man co-host, Jake Miller. Hello, Jake. Hello, internet people. <laughs> Today, we are talking our first episode. Uh, we are speaking about Forrest Gump. Um, it is a film that is well-beloved in Jake's household and uh, uh, well, yeah. seen, well seen in our family in general. Um, I cannot imagine a world where people don't know what Forrest Gump is. Right. But regardless, uh, Forrest Gump, uh, directed by Robert Zemeckis, written by Eric Roth. Starring Tom Hanks, Robin Wright, Gary Sinise, uh, Mikkel T. Williamson, Sally Field, and Haley Joel Osment. Uh, it was released in on July 6, 1994. Uh, just celebrated its 28th anniversary uh, wow. a couple days ago. Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been in our lives for the majority of our lives. Yeah. Uh, it was a absolute massive massive box office hit 330 million dollars domestic 347 international 677 million total um at the time of its box office finish it was the third highest grossing film of all time behind et and jurassic park um it was surpassed that year by the lion king so it was the second highest grossing movie of the year um it was nominated for uh a bevy of awards uh specifically um the oscars it was nominated for best picture and one best picture it was uh it was nominated uh let's see 13 oscars best picture uh one best picture best director which it won best actor for tom hanks uh one best screenplay uh one best film editing and uh one best visual effects also nominated for supporting actor for uh, gary sinise it was nominated for Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography, uh, Best Makeup, Best Original Score, Best Sound, Best Sound Effects Editing. Um, it is uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, 71% fresh for critics, but 95% with the audience. One of those yeah. uh, critical disconnect ones we will definitely get into. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jake, will you be as uh, be so kind to give us the general plot summary of 1994's Force Gump? Sure. Yeah. Uh, first off, I'll... Uh, I'll kind of put out a disclaimer. Obviously, like I I know this movie and I'll already tell you I love it. And so uh yeah, I'm I'm already biased, but so uh with that said, um yeah, so this story is about a uh what's the what's the proper term? Uh, a te technically, technically, just lower intelligence. Um, I guess lower, if you want to be technical, uh, mentally disabled would probably be the the nicest way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, he has deficiencies from the jump. Uh, so he's uh, born to a single mom. Um, in Greenbow, Alabama, she runs a bed and breakfast at their home, and uh, he's um, he also has a crooked spine, um, and so he has to wear leg braces uh, as a child. Uh, but he uh, he befriends a lovely young lady on the school bus when no one else would allow him to sit next to him named Jenny. And uh, so to use his uh, 
terminology. They were like peas and carrots. So, uh, basically he falls in love with her from the get go. But I mean, you know, as children, they're friends, uh, he's, he's bullied. Um, he faces obvious challenges, you know, during that time period being, uh, someone with some, you know, disabilities or whatever you want to call it. Um, but he, um, he ends up finding a love for running. Ironically, he gets out of the leg braces and, uh, is an incredible runner. Um, he ends up, um, going to college, um, and joins the army, goes to Vietnam. Um, Jenny throughout this time, um, she's, she's not doing good. Uh, she didn't <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. So she had a rough upbringing, um, you know, a predatory father, someone that abused her. Um, and that kind of sets her down a path of, you know, drug use, um, you know, living, living a tough life. Um, and she kind of throughout most of the movie rejects Forrest love. And something that I like is that Forrest is stays loyal the entire time anyway so he goes to vietnam he meets uh in that process he meets bubba who becomes his best friend uh and then meets his lieutenant lieutenant dan and he's like instantly loyal to him and even though lieutenant dan treats him like shit um i mean He's like, that's my boss. Anyways, uh, ends up saving Lieutenant Dan's life uh, in a battle. Him and Lieutenant meet up later. Um, Bubba dies uh, in combat. And uh, then Forrest Gump uh, fulfills a promise that he made to Bubba to become a shrimp boat captain. And Lieutenant Dan ends up working with them on the shrimp boat, uh, that becomes quite successful. Um, Forrest reconnects with Jenny and Jenny has cleaned up and is doing good. And spoiler alert finds out that, <laughs> yeah, he is, he has a son with Jenny and then Jenny dies of a illness that, I assume was AIDS, but I don't know. Presumed, yeah. yeah, no one knows. But anyways, and then, yeah, movie ends with him being a father and, um, yeah, so I droned on too long. but Not at all, not at all. A feather on the wind, you could say. Um, yes, that's a, that's a, the through line of the film. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, when you think there's a, this movie has a rich history with a lot of different things going on with it, with it, uh, you know, it was such a huge, huge moneymaker and, uh, you know, awards hit and just across the board, just kind of hit the right time of, uh, you know, Vietnam nostalgia and, uh, you know, early 90s um, and Tom Hanks in general. Um, so if, if you could, if you have one sequence of the film, that you think of, you're like, okay, that's the, that's the sequence I love the most. Like what's your favorite part of the film? Um, there's probably too much to choose from. <laughs> there is it's yeah. Um, but I mean, there's, there's certain points of the movie where, you know, it yeah. chokes you up and you know, it, it, it hits home. I would, I would say my, my favorite part is, right at the ending whenever he's sending his son off on the school bus to go to school and as as his son is stepping on to the bus said, Forrest uh, he's obviously named after Insane, him yes. but Forrest and his son stops and turns he said I just wanted to let you know that I love you so I love you too daddy and 
to me that that was the perfect finish is i mean everything came together and i think that's a culmination of you know who forrest gump is and you know it i don't know it's a beautiful moment and yeah it it chokes me up and obviously you're a dad you know what it feels like (laughs) send send kids off to school and to have that worry and and you know just just to love another human being that much i think it's encapsulated in that in that final final little scene i I always try to think of what i like the most about it and it's probably like my favorite sequence is probably the uh the running montage the uh whenever yeah in the in the in the you know the probably the two-thirds part of the film um first decides he uh he it uh, kind of harkens back to a line in the earlier the movie where you don't know what to do, just run uh, from. Uh, and and so he decides to, he doesn't know what to do because Jenny has left and they had this yeah. one night and he doesn't really know what to do. So he decides to start running and he just starts running across the country back and forth. Yeah. I, I actually made a note on that is yeah. Uh, yeah. His quote, when he's later, people are like, why are you doing this? Is it for world hunger? Is it? Yeah. Is it I just felt like running. <laughs> yeah. And 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 sometimes i mean to me you know sometimes when everything's gone wrong you just got to run yeah you know whatever your running is yeah you know, and that's and what you got to do it's an interesting it's an interesting from that perspective for me and you as well because um for listeners who don't know uh jake a lot of cross country whenever he was in uh, in high school he was a very accomplished runner Um, I got into it uh, later in life, but I mean, both of us had had parts where running was a, was a very, was a big part of the, our daily lives essentially, just because of how often we did it. Um, That's probably the one thing about the movie that I was really most impressed by is kind of the solitude and interesting ideas of um, that kind of like, like running across country in theory sounds insane, but yeah. It's kind of like, well, it seems kind of nice if you didn't have, you know, any sort of responsibilities to worry about. Um, right. Yeah. I, uh, I I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, I say a little bit, um, about Tom Hanks. Um, because Tom Hanks in this movie was in the middle of a, an all-time run that I'm not sure will ever get um, recreated. Um, I just want to, I want to give you from uh from 1992 whenever he was in a league of their own i want you to i want to give you this mm. run from 1992. Right. league of their own huge hit sleep in seattle yeah. huge hit philadelphia big hit wins an oscar yeah. forrest gump big hit wins an oscar wins best picture uh, apollo 13 big hit nominated best picture probably came in second toy story massive hit thing you do critical hit but he also directed it made a little money too he didn't spend a whole lot of money on it so success um saving private ryan another oscar nomination gigantic hit best picture nomination you've got mail huge hit toy story 2 Mm -hmm. huge hit green mile best picture nominee huge hit castaway oscar nomination huge hit uh then he goes road to perdition and catch me if you can in 2002 (laughs) that is in a row there's nothing else there there was not another movie squeezed in there oh by the way i forgot to mention um he did squeeze a couple of things in there. He also squeezed in um, being in the miniseries from the earth to the moon around Apollo 13 about them going in Apollo 11. And wow. he also was in Band of Brothers, which he produced. So yes. The, yeah. The run, the run from a league of their own to catch me if you can, that is a 10 year run of incredible success critically and box office success. It's probably unparalleled. Yeah. Uh, by yeah. another movie star yeah but so whenever you think of tom hanks in that run i mean a lot of a lot of the movies you go through there and think it's like okay there's there's a, there's a lot to like about tom hanks but what's yeah. the i mean does forrest gump fit in that tom hanks quintessential role or what's the, what's the tom hanks role for you that that fits in that it's like when i think of tom hanks this is the movie i think um man you know it there's there's almost so much that i mean i forget about it just as you're yeah. uh listing it off i'm like 
dang, that was a banger. <laughs> dang, that was a banger. It just didn't dang, stop. Was, yeah. I mean, geez, a Lou. I mean, yeah. almost he almost anything he touches turns to gold. Uh not all. I'm, uh now now, now but, I, did, I, I did have to mention the end of that run after 2002 was the Lady Killers. Yeah. Which which yeah, I know that, you despise. <laughs> yeah, that was that was rough. Yeah. But yeah. but I mean it's I mean you talk about Apollo 13 um obviously Forrest Gump. I mean uh the road to perdition is yeah amazing. I mean he he's done so much and done so well. And I think he's such a diverse actor as well. I mean, he can, you know, he did rom-coms, what two rom-coms in, Both with, uh, uh, in the nineties. Yeah. And then uh, he did Joe versus the volcano right before that as well. It's another rom-com, but it's a little, you know, and I mean, even before that, you know, he was, he was still doing stuff. Like he did big in 88 punchline, mm -hmm. the burbs, Turner and Hooch, Joe versus the volcano. Bonfire yeah, of the Vanities. What, so we did this movie called Bonfire of the Vanities. Um, critically, it's very well known because of how much of a disaster it is. He was cast as a swarmy, yuppie lawyer who is uh, very backhanded. And needless to say, it didn't fit anything that Tom Hanks was suited for. Um, and there, the film had a thousand other problems. But that was the in, – until – until he hit us, I mean, even the Lady Killers wasn't exactly a disaster, uh, money wise or stuff like that. I mean, critically, it didn't do well, but I mean, that was the only one where, like, this is a problem movie. Every like, this, yeah, this is a bust uh, across the board. Critics hated it, nobody watched it. You're gonna have to recover from that one, yeah. That yeah. was the that was essentially the only one, even Joe versus the Volcano, which weird, yeah, the weird rom com and all that kind of stuff, but it was remembered and people still like it. Turner and Hooch, the Burbs, Punchline, Big, th those th those things were there were those were those staples you see on on TNT when we were kids. It was on a lot. Um, yeah, they weren't necessarily bad. And then League of Their Own, and that it's it was a whole other level of superstardom and success. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. when I look at it, I always, you know, he's always referred to as America's dad. I guess just because he's always, you, you know, you think about that, it's funny because you think that he's not really a dad character much he doesn't play uh -huh. a whole lot of fathers i mean he plays it at the end of forrest gump but for 90 percent of the movie he's, road, road to perdition road to perdition is a is probably the best example of him being a father yes um, yeah that, that that's probably the and even that he's that's the closest he's come to an anti-hero um yes but it, it, it's it's just it, it's it's his mentality what is it about tom hanks that makes him special Man, I don't know. He's 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 got something where, you know, I mean, I can watch Apollo 13 and love his performance in it. And I'm not thinking that's Forrest Gump. Uh, I can watch Road to Perdition and not think that's Forrest Gump or the astronaut on uh, Apollo 13. So. I mean, he's got something where he can make these epic hits time and time again, and but he can be a new character and just, I mean, take me out of, oh, that guy was Forrest Gump. Whereas I've watched other movies with good accomplished actors, but I guess they kind of get typecast in my brain at least yeah, yeah, to where the whole time I'm watching it, I'm thinking – well, that he was whatever, you know, I know what you mean. So, yeah. so, yeah, I just think he's diverse. And I think in, um, in most of his performances, yeah, he takes me out of, Oh, this is Tom Hanks. You know, yeah. it's he, he's Forrest Gump or he's, you know, I, I don't remember the name of the, you know, astronaut or whatever, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, but yeah, he's, he's able to transform himself. And I think he's very, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of diverse abilities and I, so I think that's what makes him great. So I want to geek out for a little bit about the 1994 best actor nominations. Um, the, uh, 1994 best actor nominations, Tom Hanks wins for Forrest Gump. 
he's nominated alongside uh, four other guys. Um, one of them is a guy named Nigel Hawthorne. He's an old British actor. It's a movie called The Magnus of King George. I haven't seen it. I've heard nothing but good things. Um, uh, it's, it's on the list of, I'll probably watch in the next couple weeks. Um, but the other four are unequivocally wonderful. One is Paul Newman for a movie called Nobody's Fool. It was a little movie, uh, it was a little, uh, little indie movie, Bruce Willis is in it, stuff like that. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice, cute little movie. And it was one of those things where Paul Newman hasn't really been nominated in a while. Hey, he still does movies. Let's, it's one of those like nice nominations. The other two are untouchable. Uh, it's John Travolta and Pulp, Pulp Fiction, as uh, yeah. and I mean, and then then Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. So I mean, that's yeah. that's a tough that's a tough one too that's, to be like. That's a that's a high bar. Yeah, and I mean, even uh, even I know the there are some people who aren't the uh, you know Pulp Fiction is kind of run this gamut of I was like oh it's this thing that nobody's really heard of and it's this it's you know it's, it's kind of a cult thing and it cult, got so yeah. cultish and it became popular and then it became cool to hey hate on and now it's kind of become cool to like again but I mean um, mm-hmm. at the time it was such a it was such a smash sensation um, and I it's hard to default uh, Travolta's performance in that so I mean just in general yeah. that lineup is really interesting and the year of 1994 is kind of interesting in general but we'll get into that um, as we go along, I, uh, I want to talk about the most divisive part of Forrest Gump, and that is Jenny. Uh, a lot of people are not on the Jenny side and are on the, Jenny is the villain of Forrest Gump. Um, I, I don't, I have a feeling, uh, I don't feel that way. I feel like, uh, it's a lot of, um, a, a lot of it might just be sexism, just being like, it's like, well, Forrest, uh, you know, all this, this woman's trying to, you know, just kind of looking for the worst in things. Um, so first off, how do you feel about Robin Wright's performance in this movie? I thought it was amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, no criticism there as far as performance. Um, yeah, I, you know, there's... Once, once it, to me, she completely redeems herself um, when they're sitting on a park bench and the little forest is swinging and she says, I have a disease and, uh, and forest says, y'all come live with me at my home in Greenbow, Alabama. <laughs> and well, at one point she, she apologizes to him um and says uh, i wrote it down i just want to apologize for anything i ever did to you i was messed up for a long time yeah and and to me that completely redeems her because messed up people like generally don't want to be messed up yeah yeah of course you don't want to live that kind of life you don't want to live a you know you don't want to be a mess but yeah. that's, I mean, you know, whenever you have the upbringing that she did, that's that's usually the way it way it goes. So to me, I think, you know, her having a child and come back around, getting her life together, getting married, you know, I mean, that that completely redeems her. And so I don't I don't see her as a, you know, a villain of the movie. Uh, same way I, I I don't see Lieutenant Dan, um, you know, as a, a villain in the movie. I think they stand in contrast of Forrest's innocence and yeah. his loyalty and his love. And it's no matter how bad they are, these are my people and I'm sticking with them. So. It. Yeah. So I think instead of them, um, you know, Jenny specifically being the actual villain, I think she helps to highlight Forrest's loyalty yes. and goodness. I agree. I think it's one of those things where um, um, it, it's easy to be like, I, I would say there's not necessarily a villain of this movie. I mean, 
if you look at it, you're like, well, who is the, I mean, you know, Ginny's, Ginny's boyfriend, he was a turd, but he's, he didn't exactly have a, have much of a uh, dictation on what's going on in the movie. And, uh, you know, it's just, I disagree. It's, <laughs> the, it's the Viet Cong. They kill Bubba. So it's the, and the, the, clearly, <laughs> the, it's the Viet Cong. The Viet, no, the Viet Cong. Okay, let's go. Let's go Are further. Let's go further. This is the, it's the American machine that even got us into Vietnam in the first place. And you know, it kind of goes into all that kind of things in general. The most interesting part yeah. of all that is that Forrest has no. He doesn't care about any of that. He's so uh, he's. Yeah. It's not that he doesn't care. He's blissfully unaware. He do, it, it's yes. not it's not an aspect he has any purpose of. Gump, what's the point of what's the your sole purpose in this army to do what you told me to, drill sergeant? There's no yeah. there's no. He's like, it's oh, a- why did you put that <laughs> rifle together so quickly? Because you told me, drill sergeant. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cut and dry. You told me to do something. I did. It. I'm going to do it. It's like it's like well, there's no, no he, internal conflict over. Not not questioning. Why am I conflict. doing this? Why am I doing this? It's just oh, you told me to do it. I'm going to do it. It's it's almost naivety, but at the same time, I it, it's it's nicer than that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the 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 interesting thing about. Um, the really interesting thing about, uh, um, I'm sorry, about Jenny and not even Jenny about uh, Robin Wright, is mm-hmm. she was she was thrown the accolades, missed the Oscars for some reason, missed the uh, missed supporting actress um, altogether. The lineup didn't even nominate her. Um, there was a, 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 a pretty good lineup that year, but still, it's one of those things you look back and it's a movie of all these huge huge accolades and for some reason of all the things for it to miss that's it's kind of the one mm-hmm. uh, get lost in the shuffle um yeah all right so um i want to get to uh maybe one of the favorite characters uh in the film that doesn't have a whole lot to do actually in the film he's not in it very long and that's uh that's bubba uh benjamin buford blue played by uh mckelty williamson um fun fact do you know uh can do you know anybody who was offered the role of Bubba and turned it down? I don't. Uh, he said, uh, he said, I do not believe the film was going to be successful. Um, that would be Dave Chappelle. Really? Yes. Uh, also wow. Dave, David Allen Greer and ice cube also offered the role. Um, but uh, I mean, later in life, uh, Chappelle said he regretted not taking the role. So, I mean, uh, it's one of those goofy things, but I mean, um, yeah. So no one, so, no one would have done it right. Yeah. It, other it, than him. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, McKel- McKelty Williamson did, did a really great job. The funny thing about Bubba, it's almost like, um, he was, uh, he's, he's such a kindred spirit to Forrest because he's so similar. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he's always so focused on the one thing that he cares about and that's a yeah. shrimp. Um, and that's why they, I guess they get along. I mean, what, what are your, what are your general thoughts on Bubba as a character in general? Oh, he's, he's a great character. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good point of these, these two guys, why they became kindred spirits. Um, yeah, is their simplicity. And I don't, I don't mean that in any type of, you know, demeaning way. Yeah. or anything it's just they're yeah Bubba thinks about shrimp and basically Forrest thinks about whatever he's got to do at the moment and Jenny and his yeah. mama yeah you know um yeah I dude it it breaks me up every time that he's sitting on the um on that river bank holding Bubba. Yeah. You know, and he dies right there in his arms and, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, that busts me up. And I also like how this is something I found interesting, uh, was Forrest is always, you told me to do it and I, I do it. That's you a, know the the, uh, the the Vietnam scene specifically where they blow out the hole and gives him a gun and a flashlight said Forrest and he turns around 
okay ready to go like with without hesitation that's the quintessential yeah yeah and so this this isn't a guy that disobeys orders yeah but whenever he pulls lieutenant dan out and drops him off at the riverbank and uh lieutenant dan tells him hey we've got an airstrike inbound stay here that's an order yeah he disobeys an order and he says i gotta find bubba yeah it's his best friend yeah and he's gonna go get him and mm -hmm. so i i i thought that was interesting that you know this is a time when a simple dude that follows orders doesn't follow orders because of his loyalty yeah. to his best friend this is when things are going to change yeah exactly yeah um, and 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 whenever Bubba dies, he he says, you know, he was my very best good friend, mm -hmm. and that's something you don't find every day. Yeah, you know, it's so. of, and and uh, you you loyalty being one of the bigger themes of this movie. Obviously, I mean, even mm -hmm. you know, after he said, oh well, let's go into shrimping together. It's like, okay, well, Bubba died, and he did it anyway, just because he was loyal to his friend. Um, all right, it's time to go to one of my favorite characters, uh, and. My personal favorite performance of the movie, and that is Gary Sinise's Lieutenant Dan Taylor. Yeah, heck um, yeah. So uh, Lieutenant Dan, in general, being the uh, the the almost stereotypical Vietnam vet post war, and the stereotypical jingoistic rah rah soldier during war. Um, yeah, it's it's a really It's a really fascinating performance, and. Uh, my, my also favorite also a aspect of this is Gary Sinise's career post Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. It's because essentially before Forrest Gump, he was kind of a character actor working his way through, had Forrest Gump, essentially had all the possible success he could have just based off this one movie. He was in Apollo 13 and uh -huh. he was in Green Mile with Tom Hanks. But at the same time, great from, in both. Great in both, yes. But from this point on, his life is different, not even his career, because he yes. devotes his entire life essentially yes. to USO and his foundation and so pro so uh, pro uh, troops. It's it's been in Lieutenant Dan is beyond the character for him. It's I, I was just like uh, as the person to have Gary Sinise uh, thinking about Gary Sinise. But in my opinion, it's my favorite performance in the film. I think it's even better than Tom Hanks. Yeah, um, man, it's definitely a strong performance. Yeah, uh, yeah, I really can't disagree with you there. And yeah, I was going to bring that up, but I agree with you that, uh, you know, I like what Gary Sinise has done, um, you know, outside of performance in taking that role and finding a way to, you know, help veterans and stuff. Yeah. That's great. I think highly of him as a person. And then, um, but as an actor, man, he killed it. And one of like a great line. I know what you're going to say. So that's why I'm laughing. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So he's, this is the introduction of Forrest and Bubba, uh, to their new Lieutenant. Yeah. And so where, where are you guys from or something like that? And, uh, Alabama, sir. So, you boys twins? No, we are not of relation, sir. Well, obviously, it's a black dude and a yeah, so, well, yeah, white yeah, boy. It's, yeah. yeah. But the best thing is, so they say they're from Alabama. And then he, uh, so as they're kind of walking off and he's still kind of giving them, you know, standing orders, he goes, so you boys are from Arkansas, huh? I've been through there. Little Rock's a fine town. <laughs> you know, as he's got, yeah. he's got like a cigarillo, you know, <laughs> and then he just goes and takes a shit. <laughs> it, well, he, he, he's about to drop trow. He comes up and tells him something. He's like, keep your feet clean. And then, then, then goes down. So, yeah. Well, well, and the last thing he says uh, in that scene is, and don't go doing something stupid like getting yourself killed. And then he goes to take a shit. And Forrest looks at Bubba and goes, I sure hope I don't let him down. <laughs> well, 
Well, yeah, no shit. You're you're dead if you let them down. But it's always, it's always funny when I think of these type of things. Like it's the, those. The the fun thing about Lieutenant Dan is he's so no nonsense, and then has. It, it's funny that the the uh, the difference between when Forrest saves him and then whenever. Um, mm-hmm. b- before and after obviously before he's so no nonsense and he's like this is this is what i do this is my thing i'm good at and all this kind of stuff and then once he saves him he doesn't feel like he's like this this life is mm-hmm. this is extra it's not what i signed up for and he doesn't know how to really approach it um yeah. i really love what sinise does with that because like many vietnam veterans sink into depression alcoholism um all, all that kind of stuff um yeah. Fun fact. Uh, fun fact about um, the this movie in general. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, amputees had a lot of problems with uh, Lieutenant Dan's uh, depiction. They said uh-huh. uh, they said it's uh, he makes it too hard. They said it's they're like oh the, really like the scene the the scene where the uh, the the girls knock him out of the wheelchair and yeah Force wants to help him he's like, ah and then he gets up back in there. And a lot of amputee. I read an interview with an amputee saying it's like it's really not that hard to get back into a wheelchair if you've been an amputee for any amount of time. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's always just kind of funny to me in that aspect. But um, you know, it's a good time to segue to that. So one of the uh, one of the interesting things that you know all those Oscars that Forrest Gump was nominated for, it won Best Visual Effects. And if you think about yeah. it, at the time, it was a it was a. Um, you know, it, it was it was first class with splicing force in the middle of talking to presidents and stuff like that. And Lieutenant yeah. Dan's the yeah. legless Lieutenant Dan is seamless. Yeah, and and that's something that uh, I specifically remember, like when I was a kid, when this movie came out, when I first saw it. I I remember our dad saying that he saw how they made it mm-hmm. and you know talking about like just how that was done and that was just mind-blowing at that time <laughs> like did this guy chop off his legs yeah. for yeah. this role yeah real or, method yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then showing a guy with john john f kennedy lbj um john you Lennon. know I'll, yeah yeah I I mean that yeah. at the time that was just nuts. Pretty nuts. It's it's an impressive. It was a really cutting edge thing. Yeah. Um. Man, it's definitely a strong performance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really can't disagree with you there. And yeah, I was gonna bring that up, but I agree with you that uh, you know, I like what Gary Sinise has done. Um you know, outside of performance in taking that role and finding a way to, you know, help veterans and stuff. Yeah. That's great. I think highly of him as a person. And then, um, but as an actor, man, he killed it. And one of like a great line. I know what you're going to say. So that's why I'm laughing. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So he's, this is the introduction of Forrest M. Bubba uh to their new lieutenant. Yeah. And so where where are you guys from or something like that? And uh Alabama, sir. So you boys twins? No, we are not of relation, sir. <laughs> well, obviously it's a black dude and a <laughs> well, yeah, white yeah, boy. It's yeah. yeah. But the best thing is so they say they're from Alabama, and then he uh so as they're kind of walking off and he's still kind of giving them, you know, standing orders, he goes, so you boys are from Arkansas, huh? I've been through there. Little Rock's a fine town. Effects. And if you think about yeah. it, at the time, it was a, it was a, um, you know, it, it was, it was first class with splicing force in the middle of talking to presidents and stuff like that. And Lieutenant yeah. Dan's the legless yeah. Lieutenant Dan is seamless. Yeah, and and that's something that uh, I specifically remember, like when I was a kid, when this movie came out, when I first saw it. I I remember our dad saying that he saw how they made it, mm-hmm. and 
you know, talking about like just how that was done. And that was just mind blowing at that time. <laughs> like, did this guy chop off his legs yeah, for yeah. this role? Yeah, real or, method. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then showing a guy with John John F. Kennedy, LBJ, um, yeah. John you know, all, yeah. Yeah. I I mean that yeah. at the time that was just nuts. Pretty nuts. It's it's an impressive it was a really cutting edge thing that in the in the now, now that being said, at the time we're like, man, this is incredible. And Lieutenant yeah. Dan's legs look seamless. Nowadays, the presidential right. scenes look a little clunky, a little mm -hmm. bit. I mean, but for 1994, it was remarkable. But um, yeah. just for the yeah, but I mean, considering I still fact, think they're pretty good. I, don't think I they're mean, pretty good. I mean, yeah, uh, it's the it's the kind of good way to. Um, I mean, you know, technology is always going to get better. And it's always sure. going to be going on from there, but uh, but regardless, um, there'll always be something like that. Okay, um, I want to play a little uh, a little game with you. Um, I say a little game; it's more like a just kind of a poll. Um, so, Forrest Gump okay. is directed uh, by Robert Zemeckis. Um, uh -huh. It is not necessarily a name that is well known among uh, you know the general public. Might heard the names like, "Oh, it's the guy who directed Forrest Gump," but that's uh, that's where I know him from. Okay. That's that's it. I okay. I only remember seeing a Robert okay. Zemeckis film like in the titles. That's okay. it. That's now, the only lot. I am going to change your life now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a poll of essentially the amount of movies of his that you have seen. Uh, I'm okay. only gonna, I'm not going to I'm going to go back uh, not the entire uh, the entirety of his filmography. But I'm going to start in 1984. So he did a couple. Uh, he did a couple small. He did a couple shorts. Uh, a, a movie called I Want to Hold Your Hand, Use Cars in 1980. 1984 is really where it kicks in. And I'm going to keep a running total. The year I was born. The year you were born. So the very next year. Okay. Romancing the Stone. Romantic comedy with uh, Michael Douglas. And Have you heard of that? You haven't seen it, though. I don't think I've seen it. Okay. But I've heard of it. So that was, 1980, that was 1984. That was his big breakthrough. The next year, Back to the Future. No shit. Back to the Future one. Um, really? Three years later, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Wow. <laughs> Back to the Future two and three. Damn. Uh, <laughs> um, I love Back to the Future two. I'm surprised. <laughs> I can't uh, believe I didn't know that. Uh, 1992, Death Becomes Her with Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn, and uh, they, uh, yes, uh, with uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then Forrest Gump, uh -huh. um, Contact with Jodie Foster, where, uh, yeah. where, yeah, and then, so you've seen that one. Yeah. Um, 2000 was specifically impressive. Another one of your favorites, Castaway. No shit. <laughs> okay, so the fun thing about Castaway, so he starts- I Castaway. love Castaway. So he, I love he, it. He starts Castaway, he gets the production all set. Um, they do all these scenes with uh, fatter Tom Hanks. Yeah. And then they stop production so Tom Hanks can lose the weight. Mm -hmm. uh, while he's the, while they're doing that, they make What Lies Beneath with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay. It's a, it's a horror movie. You seen that one? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, we're seven out of eight so far of his, of his movies. Um, so the, the only one you haven't seen is Romancing the, Romancing the Stone. Okay. So, so what lies, far. So Cast Away, What Lies Beneath. Uh, 2004, The Polar Express. Of course. <laughs> okay. I so, like Christmas and I have kids. Exactly. Yeah. So this is this is where his career changes. So he makes The Polar Express, and from then on, his life is CGI. His life is those type of movies. He makes mm -hmm. an adaptation of Beowulf, which is C okay. completely CGI. I saw it in movie theaters. I think I was with the other four people in America who saw it. So uh, I don't ex – that, that's that's – uh, nope. that's that's reasonable uh, a christmas carol the cgi one with jim carrey oh man that's that's a good one <laughs> okay so that really is and i love the christmas carol story <laughs> i love the you know george c scott version yep i'll watch it i watch it multiple times every <laughs> christmas season but yeah and that that uh, with jim carrey that one's okay so that was him too 
Okay. That's a good one. We're still going. Flight. Oh, really? <laughs> That's another fucking banger. <laughs> uh, now, now, now we've gotten to the point where maybe you probably have stopped not seeing it. So we're, so we're 10 out of 12 right now. Uh, Beowulf and Romance That's in the bad. Stone. Um, the Walk. Uh, it's it's based on it's uh, it's based on a, it's an interesting story. There was a Oscar winning documentary called Man on Wire about the French about a French high wire artist who walks between the twin towers in nineteen in the eighties. They made uh-huh. a live action version of this called The Walk with Joseph Gordon Levitt. Uh, it made people sick in the theaters because it was very hyper realistic. So uh, yeah, so makes- you didn't see that one. Allied with Brad Pitt and Marion Cotillard. No. Okay, that one that nope. was a more adult one. I didn't mind that. Okay, now now we're getting into real real bad territory. Welcome to Marwin with Steve nope. Carell. Nope. Okay, and then uh, the witches. Wait, uh, what was that Steve Carell one? The Welcome to Marwin is the one where he is uh, he is um, he suffers brain damage, and he makes little <laughs> dolls uh, to oh. help cope with it, and uh, it, it it has it coincides with the trial of the Nazis who beat him up. It's okay. It's it's I, one of it's I've heard it's one of the worst movies. I've heard it's terrible. Yeah, I think I remember like seeing previews or something, but yeah, I okay, didn't so, see it. So, so that's fun. So you you went you went over over this last four, but you went 10 of his first 12. So that mm-hmm. was fun. So very much a common man director. Uh you yes. know, the three back to the futures, who framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh who flight? doesn't like that? The you know, flight, flight cast away the polar expresses, all those kind of things. Um, his next movie, by the way, is a uh, is a another Tom Hanks collaboration. It's a live action version of Pinocchio, um, where Pinocchio is going to be photorealistic and Tom Hanks is Geppetto. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, there's a trailer out for it if you want to go check it out. It's uh, it looks terrifying. Um, I don't think in a good way, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so. Robert Zemeckis, I, whenever, you know, I don't, he's, he's very, you know, back to the future. Roger Rabbit is almost unimpeachable. Like as far as like just pure yeah. entertainment. When I think sure. of Robert Zemeckis and, it, and if you think about the movies he does, it's, it's kind of hard to deny. I don't necessarily see him as kind of like an auteur type of director who puts metaphors and deep themes and these interesting visuals in his, He's a very technically interesting director. Like the fact that all the t- technological stuff they do in Forrest Gump or the, the, the advancements and all the cool stuff they do in Back to the Future and especially mm-hmm. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, um, you know, uh, contact, uh, then all the photorealistic stuff with Polar Express, Beowulf, Christmas mm-hmm. Carol. And then if you think about the non-talk stuff, the actual plain crash sequence from flight is absolutely Mm -hmm. breathtakingly remarkable i wish the rest of the film led up to the uh, to the rest of that film but i mean if you think about all this you don't really think of him uh, i personally don't think of him as a director as a like a you know lot doing a lot of different interesting things i think he just i I see him more of as a hollywood common man director based on his movies i would imagine you've Mm -hmm. probably seen the same thing yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, to me, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, to me, I mean, um, I mean, back to the future, like, <clears throat> I mean, amazing, you know, I mean, who doesn't like back to the future? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and um, it's probably the movie I've seen the most of any movie I've uh, in, in the world. Uh, uh, probably. I mean, seriously, yeah. of the movies, like, it's probably the one that has been so on tv consistently since we were kids and is still to this day and every time it's on i watch it so i mean yeah same here yeah yeah so so from the common man's perspective yeah i would say uh robert zemeckis from zemeckis see see, zemeckis see it's it's such a i'm glad to have an easy name (laughs) But yeah. yeah, I I I do think that he makes uh films for your common man. I mean, entertaining, mm-hmm. uh well done. I mm-hmm. I think he's 
he's shown adaptability over the years um, as far as getting into more CGI and mm -hmm. more, you know, and utilizing technology that's available to yeah. do different stuff. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, technically, you know, once the critics dig into it, maybe they find a bunch of problems with it. But I would say... <laughs> You know he's a uh, he's a common man's director. And I would I would agree with he, you. He 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 wants to put entertaining shit out to theaters that are going to put butts in the seat. I think and ultimately, he, that's your job. I think. I mean, I think, I think another interesting part of it is that his movies make an absolute boatload of money. Like, like between three between three Back to the Futures, Romance in the Stone, which made a lot of money. Uh, Force Gump, as we have discussed, made a ton of money. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, even Contact, which was kind of a mid-tier, still still yeah. made plenty. And then the Polar Express movie, Christmas Carol, Beowulf, those movies, especially Polar Express, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to venture that of all the movies he has made, so Polar Express is probably third in the amount of money he still makes. Just because whenever you, get, whenever you get Christmas stuff around, it's always going to be around every year. It's going to be on TV every year. Oh, Back yeah. You watch it three, four, five times, exactly. you know, from yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving to New yeah. Year's. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, so it's it's one of those things I understand. This is a, it's actually a good, a good time to kind of talk about the critical disconnect of this film in general. So when we start first started talking about this, I was... Uh, I have a I have a letterbox ranking of all my best picture winners and where they essentially finish fit in all my stuff. So I, I have a I have a personal feeling the Godfather Part Two is pro I think it's the best film ever made. It's and since it won best really? picture, but two over one. Uh, just a personal opinion. So I was looking at it the other day when I was like, okay. By the I way, yeah, go ahead. R R I P James Con. R I P James Con. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> this is as good as time as I have any to tell you. So, um, I, uh, my lasting memory of James Conn, I was listening to a podcast and, uh, they had a porn star, Ginger Lynn on there. And she recounted a story the first time she met James Conn. She was, she went over to a friend's house and they were sunbathing naked. I think they didn't have bathing suits. They were porn stars, oh. so they didn't care. So uh -huh. they were on the side of the pool. He said, James Conn comes out. And she goes, oh, my gosh. And he goes up to her and he says, get on all fours. And she gets on all fours and he goes up, uh, takes a hit out of a crack pipe, uh, uh -huh. blows smoke. As uh, you do. As you do. Blows smoke yeah. into her butt and she farts uh -huh. the smoke back into his face. And so, Sweet. so rest in peace, James Conn. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. So, we've all been there we've all been there who who has not el who else has not had the opportunity to do so um yeah okay so so i'm going uh, so i as i was saying i'm going through all my best picture uh winners and where i have the rankings and i i'm looking through and i'm like okay where's forrest gump and it's like how do i have it ranked and i look down there and i have it ranked very very low in the ratings and i'm like it didn't feel right and it's mostly just because I feel like it had been ingrained. It's like, no, 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 it's not cool to like it. And I was like, well, that's stupid. It's kind of a dumb reason to have it down in the rankings. And so I adjusted it and I realized it's, it's, I have it now. A lot of the best picture winners, I really, really, really love. So of the, I think of the ones I've seen, I'm up to uh, 78. I have it in the, I have it 54th. It doesn't mean it's, I have it bad. It's four out of five stars in my mind. That's a great yeah. film, but uh, originally I had it down really low, um, you know, around Driving Miss Daisy in a movie I didn't really enjoy, and I just realized I was being overly critical of it, and I think a lot of uh, critics have the same thing. I mean, it's, as we said, it was 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not something that critics didn't enjoy, but I think it's just uh, a lot of people getting a little too into some, uh, kind of pushing back against something that might have been a little too popular. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think any, any time you have, um, you know, a big hit or, or anything like that, I mean, Titanic had tons of haters, Absolutely. but it made what, I mean, that was number one for 
right? It was the it, biggest was money one, maker for a little one, bit. It was number one in the box office for like 16 weeks. Uh, it was, yeah, yeah it, it made something like, you know, it, you know, it was the first, I think it was the first billion dollar making movie. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, what do you expect? I, but with Forrest Gump was the same thing. I mean, you remember back then run yeah. Forrest run was a thing you heard on every late night talk show, every SNL sketch at school. Oh, yeah. Anytime anybody ran, it was run Forrest run. That was just what it was because yeah. you couldn't get away from that movie. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think anytime, I mean, yeah, you have a big hit. Um, you can look at it at, LeBron James has tons of haters, you know, yep. Kobe Bryant had haters, you know, I mean, whenever you're kind of the goat at, yeah. you yeah. know, at, at the time, then yeah, people are going to shit on you. Um, but you know, at the end it's, it's the results. It's what's putting butts in seats. What's making money. And I think I think a lot of uh, the the critical backlash from this is not necessarily that Forrest Gump was all that bad, and, and there and, and, and there are some things that people can really did, that people dig into and kind of have this allegory based on the book that Forrest Gump was made off of and kind of reading too much into stuff. Uh, uh, there, there's a there's a big there's a big uh, argument essentially. This is a uh, a conservative wet dream of of life mm-hmm. being that you know. He he! If you just live life, life uh, America will take care of you, as opposed mm-hmm. to pushing back on all these things. And I kind of push back on that, mostly because Tom Hanks is behind the wheel, and you know the famously conservative Tom Hanks. Um, you, uh, that's what, like I said, obviously. Yeah. Not. I mean, so you, you think of those type of things, and and he's highly. Is that all the Trump rallies? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of think of these things, and I I I I think it's just a little overblown. <laughs> But more than anything else, mm-hmm. I think there are two things going against it. Is one, it wasn't Pulp Fiction, and all the critics that were just like this, this level, this this movie's on a whole other level of of uh, of what Pulp's, uh, you know, Pulp Fiction versus uh, Forrest Gump is is a different thing. And I get that. I understand that disconnect and not and be like this is just kind of hokey mainstream stuff. I understand that. The other thing it had going for it is even the people who were like, no, the good mainstream adult movies, they had Shawshank to look up at. Look up at. And you go, no, even if you went on the other direction, Shawshank is superior to this. So I always thought that was kind of like, in a lot of people's minds, it should be third in the list of things that should go, as opposed to, oh, this, is, this was a huge hit with a major star. I get that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And... You know, as far as, you know, the criticism of, you know, the American dream. Yeah. Like, does he really live the American dream? I mean, he went through a lot of shit, right? <laughs> like, like, I mean, it's not, it's not a guy that just got a perfect house with the white picket fence and got his girl and all this. I mean, there was it's tremendous struggle and you know he ends up you know perhaps with the american dream but i mean i don't know i think it's 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 a story and 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 i think it connects with a lot of people just because you see one man's struggle throughout his life yeah and to me, a good movie is something that can hit you personally mm-hmm. where you can relate to it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I've lost a dear friend. I've, I've, you know, I've, I lost my mother yeah, or yeah, something like that. Yeah. I, I, you know, <clears throat> and ultimately I think this, for me at least, I think Forrest Gump, uh relates to me just in we all have struggles we all go through incredible stuff and you just you got to keep running yeah that's you know and and um i i don't know i i mean i know i wouldn't yeah it's to me the struggle is 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 more of the story yeah. really 
you know, it's not necessarily, and, the, it's, it's the journey, not the destination type thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That the destination ends up great. Um, you know, like I said, you know, he becomes a father and, but, um, yeah, just that struggle. I, I, I think it reminds me that we all have a story. Yeah. Like you could make a, you could make a movie out of a bunch of people's lives. Sure. Really? I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. So, so, uh, but, but before we, uh, kind of wrap up, I just want to add a couple things. I, uh, I read about, uh, the film that might, might interest you. So, um, according to the, um, according to the writer of the novel, uh, Forrest Gump, uh, Winston Groom, uh, Jenny didn't die of age. She died of hepatitis C. Okay. Which tracks, which, which would is, yeah. At the time it was uncurable at the time. Um, I, IV drug use makes yeah. sense. Makes total sense. Um, so have you heard of, uh, the, <laughs> have you heard of the sequel to the, to Forrest Gump? Oh no. It, it's, it's not the movie, not the movie Forrest Gump. They made a sequel to Forrest Gump, uh, the book. Um, so from what I understand, uh, it essentially they uh, it was called Gump and Co. And it was created. It was done after the movie uh, was done. And essentially, Forrest Gump, um, he he interacts with further things from 1986 on to 1995, including Tom Hanks himself. Uh, it was an absolute disaster. Um, everybody just goes, this, yeah. is, this is so stupid. Um, but, uh, thank goodness they, uh, they didn't actually ever adapt it. Um, yeah. Thank but, God. Um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I was probably initially too harsh on it. Uh, I do enjoy the film and it's very rewatchable. Um, there's a lot of pops, you, a lot of things you go in there. Oh, I forgot the other part. The other thing that made a ton of money, the Forrest Gump soundtrack, the Forrest Gump soundtrack yes. is, it's essentially a stream of every single hit it could be from yeah um, 1965 to whenever you know whenever that uh whenever it ran through the the needle drop i always remember is running on empty mm -hmm. uh by jackson brown as they were going through just be uh whenever he's running um obviously running on yeah. empty, a little heavy-handed but still um against the wind against the way yeah against the wind was in there uh, uh the 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 most famous one I always think of is Jenny on the ledge strung out on heroin to the, uh, yeah. to the bridge of Freebird. Yeah. So, I mean, bridge. It, it, yeah. yeah. Freebird. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, got up to number two on the billboard Adams chart. Uh, it, it sold 12 million copies. The soundtrack, just the soundtrack, <laughs> just the soundtrack. So, I mean, um, this was an all around success from absolutely everywhere. Um, yeah. So the, the, they so it turns out they did write the sequel to it. Uh, the uh, director of uh, the writer Eric Roth did write the sequel. Um, it begins with him sitting on the park bench waiting for his son to return from school. But um, then 9 11 happened and they went, Oh, this seems stupid, let's not do this. <laughs> just, just let it be like <laughs> exactly. It's you like you don't need a sequel to everything. I mean, yeah. it's like Michael Jordan coming back. <laughs> like nah yeah we're agree. all good here I yeah agree. so uh that just about wraps up our uh episode on forrest gump jake is there any last words uh any any other things you wanted to bring up before we uh before we get out of here uh all i'll do is i'll just uh throw out uh my my favorite one-liners yes okay go ahead and, and give it to me there's no so um i'm pretty tired i think i'll go home now yeah, at the end of him running. That's, yep. <laughs> uh, and I will amend my favorite scene. Okay. That I told you earlier okay. about the bus. I think it's whenever he shows up to Jenny's apartment. Mm. Oh, yeah, and I know what you're talking about. Finds out, you know, this is his son. And I love it. Like, he got a daddy named Forrest, too. <laughs> Yeah, and you're take, his daddy for us. Yeah, take, take some of everything it is worth. Yeah, yeah. But he's just watching them watch Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. And he says, he's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'll say that's that's my favorite one-liner. 
because yeah, very, just very, as very that sentimental as the dad. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyone that's, you know, had a kiddo and you're like, man, so that hits home. And then, um, I like this quote because it reminds me of you actually. Okay. Because if someone asked me what you do, okay. I say, well, he works for this company and he does some kind of computer shit. I don't know. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But it reminds me of whenever Forrest finds out that Lieutenant Dan invested him in Apple. <laughs> and then he becomes a gajillionaire. Yeah. But he says, he got me invested in some kind of fruit company. <laughs> like that's <laughs> I I feel like if I try to describe your job that's about as accurate as it I'd be like uh he works for uh I, I really some computer shit <laughs> I don't know I really like the next line after that and he said uh, he said there's Lieutenant Dan Lieutenant Dan said we didn't have to worry about money anymore I said well, that's good one less thing <laughs> like <laughs> one less thing it's always yeah. fun it's always fun to think about that um yeah, and the, since it, I was a gojillionaire, yeah. I mowed that grass for free. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, Oscar-winning screenplay. Uh, there you go. You're a big fan. One of absolutely one of, one of yeah. your favorite one of your favorite movies. Uh, definitely in top ten. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, definitely. So, Common Man, I'll give it a love it. Uh, I'll give it four out of five. Four to five. 4.0 out of 5.0. Um, I usually do out of five stars. But uh, like I said, um, a very worthy winner of Best Picture. I don't see it as one of those, like, what are the all-time Oscar atrocities. Um, it's It made a ton of money. It's enjoyable. Every time it's on, I generally watch it. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And by this point, if you haven't watched it, then <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh, that's the final word. Thank you very much for that. That does You're welcome. This, that does it for this episode of the Film Critic in the Comments. Sorry. Thank you so much for joining us. You can follow me on Twitter at Neb has been on Letterbox at Neb810 on Instagram at Ben Miller Movies. Check out my website, ice cream for freaks.com. You can follow my other writing on the film experience and cinema scholars. Uh, Jake, where can the people find you? They can't. As, there you go. Good. Oh, well. Have a good one. <laughs> Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Critic Common Pod. Like, subscribe, rate, and review. Uh, our pod is available anywhere you can uh, get your podcast and on YouTube here. We will catch you guys next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>